All right, here's a review for your Chapter 4C um, test and a little bit of video help for the Chapter 4C review. So very quickly, I just want to talk about some tips that you're going to use when you factor. Uh, when you see two terms, you want to take out a GCF first, okay? And then if you see two terms, you want to consider a difference of two squares. Um, in certain other cases, which um, you might see also as difference or sum of cubes, that's going to maybe come next chapter, though, and not so much here. So... The other thing is when you see three terms, okay, take out a GCF factor, MAF boxes, etc., or use the quadratic formula. So different things that you need to consider when you see, depending upon the number of terms that you see. So looking at this review, I want to completely factor the questions in number one. So what you see here are two terms. The only one that has three terms is B. So what I teach is, is MAF. So I'm going to look at I'm going to look at E right here. I see two terms. So first thing I think about is GCF. Is there a greatest common factor out of these two terms? The answer to that question is no. There's nothing that comes out of 9 and 121. The next thing I check is are either of these terms perfect squares? And in fact, they both are. So when I see two perfect squares, you fa factoring becomes very simple. You don't have to do MAF. You, have, you just consider the fact that there are perfect squares, so you do the difference of two perfect squares. So what times itself makes 9x squared? That would be 3x, 3x times 3x. What times itself makes a 121, and that would be 11. So now you say, okay, 3x and 11 are your perfect, you know, are the numbers that multiply times themselves to equal the numbers given. So now it's just plus minus. Okay? So 3x plus 11, 3x minus 11. And if you were to FOIL that back, you would very quickly get 9x squared minus 121. All right, and just real quick, I mean, just kind of illustrate this with a simple example. You got two terms in, in letter A here. It says x squared minus 36. Well, what times itself makes x squared? Very simple, just x, right? What times itself makes 36? Very simple, just 6. So there's a, a very quick example of difference of two squares. Okay, and you could try that with some of these other ones and things like that. So part B, if you want to look at how to factor that, you got three terms, so it's not going to be difference of two squares. So the way that I teach the fact of this is the MAF method, so MAF. And everything starts with MAF, whether you do boxes or whatever. Uh, everything begins with MAF. M is the number that you get when you multiply A times C. In this case, A is 1, and C is negative 63, so M is negative 63. A is 2, so now I'm stuck trying to find factors of negative 63 that add to 2. And when I think about 63, the only things I think about are 9 and 7. So then you get, you're going to say, okay, any, some combination of those is going to multiply to negative 63 but add to 2. So that would be positive 9, negative 7. And if there's no number in front of the x squared other than 1, your job at this point is very easy. You just simply take the two factors and you put them in with x. So it's x plus 9, x minus 7. And once again, feel free to foil back to see if x plus 9 times x minus 7 gives you x squared plus 2x minus 63, and it should. Okay? So continuing on with this review sheet, if you're looking at the next bunch, uh, once again, uh, employ that idea that if you got two terms, try to, do the, try to do GCF first, and then see if you can do anything from there. These questions actually have you solving. So the, these questions have an answer. So basically, what I want to try to find is what is x. And typically what you, what you know is that when you see x squared, you're going to get two answers for x, um, whether that be two of the same answers or two different answers. Typically, you're going to get two answers uh, for these particular questions. So looking at letter C, for instance, I think C is, is kind of a tricky one because it's got two terms, but you don't do difference of two squares. However, you do do your, your GCF, so the greatest common factor that can come out of each of these is x. So when you take a GCF out, essentially what you're doing is you're dividing both terms by it. So x squared divided by x gives me x. Negative 6x divided by x is negative 6. And actually from there, there's nothing else you can do. Okay, Basically from this point, I'm just ready for the zero products property, which tells me if two things multiply to make zero, either one or both of them have to be zero. So it's x equals zero or x minus 6 equals zero. If x equals 0, there's one solution. There's one of my two answers. And if x minus 6 equals 0, I'll just add 6 to both sides, and I see that x equals 6. So once again, it had an x squared. You should have gotten two solutions. It should have you know, found two solutions, and in fact, you did find two solutions. 
let's look at one that has a lead coefficient of something other than 1. So like a good example would be H here. So H has three terms. So automatically I'm thinking three terms. And if you're like, what are you talking about, three, two terms? I'm just counting the number of terms here. So this has one, two, three terms. Okay? So for, the, for this particular one, you want to find the two answers here. And I'm going to use MAF. The difference here is you got a lead coefficient other than 1, so I'm going to have to do something when I get to that point. So m is the number that you get when you multiply a times c. So a is 3, c is negative 7, so 3 times negative 7 gives me negative 21. All right, so that's m. That's the multiply. That's what you get. a is always the number that's the b value. It's the number that's with x, in this case, 20. So what multiplies to negative 21 but adds to 20? Well, you're like, okay, well, that's not too difficult. Um, it's going to be some combination of 1 and 21. Um, so it's going to be positive 21 and negative 1. If you think about those, those multiply to negative 21, add to 20, so I'm good. So from here, you do exactly like we did before, but you got to realize your lead coefficient is 3 now. you got to take that into account. So i got x plus 21, x minus 1. However, however, you have a lead coefficient of 3, so here's the trick. You've got to divide both of these numbers by that lead coefficient, okay? And then you reduce. So from here you get, and again, 3 was the lead coefficient. I divided both numbers by that. So here I get x plus 21 over 3 is x plus 7. x minus 1 over 3 is x minus a third. If I want to factor that perfectly, since it doesn't reduce, you pull the 3 out in front of the x. And this is what I get. So here's your zero products property. So x plus 7 equals 0, or 3x minus 1 equals 0. So this is going to give me x equals negative 7, or x equals positive 1 third. So you see how your answers need to take into account the fact that the lead coefficient is something other than 1. All right. And then lastly, I want to talk about what happens if you can't do MAF. What happens if you try MAF and it fails? So looking at like letter N here, you got, well, let's see what we got. There's a different one. So yeah, let's look at the letter N here. And here's an example of where if you have Lee coefficient of something other than 1 and you try to do MAF and everything doesn't work out, you have to do what's called the quadratic formula, which we'll talk about in a second. So M is 4. A is negative 8. And now here's where you get to your point where you're like, okay, what well, multiplies a 4 but adds to negative 8? And there's very few numbers that multiply to 4, 1 and 4, 2 and 2, and none of those add to negative 8. So this one means you've got to use the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, once again, is x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you might have a, a calculator program that does this for you. We're going to do it by hand here just for the sake of the problem. So negative b is opposite of b, opposite of negative 8 is 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, and from here it's just a matter of simplifying and doing the operations correctly. Feel free to use your calculator to do any of these operations. So 8 squared is 64, negative 8 squared is 64, so it's a positive. it doesn't matter if, it, if you're squaring a positive or squaring a negative. Uh, negative 4 times 4 times 1 is going to give me negative 16, and they're going to be over 8. Okay, so this gives me 8 plus or minus 64 minus 16 is 48 over 8. So there's going to be 8 plus or minus square root of 48. 16 comes out three times. So I'm going to I'm going to just going to write the reduced radical version. If you're like, how did you do that? You know, off to the side, you could try that. But the square root of 48, 16 is a perfect square, and it goes in three times. I'm just going to skip that, sh showing that step, just so I can do this problem in a little less space. So now I look at my three terms here, and I say, what's the common factor? And in this case, 4 comes out. 4 comes out of 8 twice. 4 comes out of itself once. Okay. Let me erase that. 4 comes out of itself once. And then 4 comes out of 8 two times again. So it's 2 plus or minus root 3 over 2. And that's my answer. 
don't try to reduce these, please. Okay, a lot of students are like, oh, just cancel those out. Those are no, those don't cancel. The only the only way you can cancel is if all three terms have a common factor, which I saw here, but in this case they didn't, so that that'd be my final answer. So there's an example of where MAF does not work, and you have to use quadratic formula. All right, page two of this review, you kind of see. Um, the big thing from this page is completing the square. There's definitely more questions than that. We're going to look at one completing the square question, go through the steps involved, and then we're going to look at a word problem that, that involves um, some of these same concepts we've been working on. So question three says solve by completing the square. And if you look to the right of this page, you see that there's some tips here that I give you for completing the square. It says move the constant to the other side. So that's going to be your first step. All right, and then after that, you determine the value that completes the square on the left side and add that value to both sides. Don't just add something to one side of an equation. You have to add it to both sides. And lastly, write the left side of the equation as a perfect square, then solve by extracting square roots. So we'll show you that what that looks like here in a second. So we'll just look at question uh, 3A here. All right, and typically, I, I want to do this process when MAF does not work. Because if MAF works, why would I waste my time completing the square? And just for reference, looking at this one, I see that um, some, what multiplies the 20 but adds to 8. So you try, okay, well, multiplies the 20, you got 5 and 4, 2 and two and 10. But actually, no, any of those, none of those factors would add to, multiply to positive 20 and still add to positive 8. So actually, this one is a good example of where MAF would fail. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the steps. I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides first. So clearly, x squared plus 8x. And here's where I kind of leave a space. I say plus something to complete my square equals negative 20 plus something. Okay, so now I got I got to say, well, what, what what completes the square? And if you remember from one of the previous videos, you got half of the, the value, the B value, squared. So the, the number that goes here, if you want to remember, it's kind of like off to the side, is always B over 2 squared. Okay, so B is 8, 8. Divided by 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So when I see that, I add it to both sides of the equation. Again, the equation is like a scale. You can't just add 16 to the left side. You have to add it to both sides. So at this point, you're stuck with 8x squared plus 8x plus 16, which factors down to x plus 4 squared, x plus b over 2 squared. And now negative 20 plus 16 is negative 4. And here's why MAF didn't work is because you see that when, I, when I'm ready to solve here, I square root a negative. So what is the square root of a negative? The square root of a negative, you just pull out an i. So at this point, I square root. When I square root anything, I got a thing plus or minus. So basically what I got here is plus or minus i root 4. Well, root 4 is 2. So the square root of a negative 4 is 2i, and it's plus or minus 2i. So you see I pulled out the negative, and that became i, and then square root of 4 became 2. All right, and make sure when you square root anything, it's plus or minus. I don't have to put plus or minus on both sides, just on one side. So then it's x plus 4. I'm going to subtract 4. And I get x equals negative 4 plus or minus 2i. And that would be my final answer for that one. And I obtained that by completing the square. And that's probably the easiest way to solve it, because otherwise you're stuck doing the quadratic, quadratic formula. And I think the quadratic formula is a little more complicated, a little more involved, a little more opportunity to make mistakes than doing the complete the square process. So check that out. Try B and C and uh, see if you can do that same process. So moving along, I wanted to look also, instead of just complete the square, I wanted to look at question six here. and Because question six and seven are the same. So if I look at six, you should be able to take what I do there and try seven. So this is the, it says the length of a rectangle is four feet longer than the width. Find the dimensions of the rectangle if the area of the rectangle is 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a picture. So the length is four feet longer than the width. So if I call the width x, then the length is four feet longer. So if, you know, if the width was 10, the length would be 14, or 10 plus four, so that's how that works. So let's find the dimensions of the rectangle if the area is 12. So what I say, when you find the area of a rectangle, it's simply just length times width. So the area is 12, so therefore x times x plus four equals 12. So this is kind of like a geometry question and with algebra involved. And what you see here, you get x squared plus 4x equals 12. I'm going to subtract the 12 over right away so that I get my quadratic that I can solve now. So I'm going to do MAF. Well, multiplies to negative 12 by adds to 4. 
and that would be factors of negative 12. So I'm thinking like 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and I see pretty quickly that 2 and 6, some combination, negative 2 and positive 6 are going to give me add to 4 and going to multiply to negative 12. So at this point, since there's no number in front of x squared, I'm pretty much done. x minus 2, x plus 6. So then I get x equals 2 or negative 6. And in fact, negative 6 is garbage because negative 6 can't, it can't be this side here. If, if this side were negative 6, that would make no sense geometrically. So the answer to this question is x is 2, which makes this dimension 2, and makes this dimension 6. I mean, you could almost guess and check with the 5, 2 times 6 makes 12, and 6 is 4 more than, than 2. But that's the, you know, the algebraic way of figuring it out. So my dimensions, my answer is it's a 2 by 6 rectangle. All right. All right, here's the last page of review. I'm going to look at one question from each, each number right here. So I'm going to look at one from part 8 and one from part 9. And the tip here is radicals cannot be combined unless they are alike. And when we learned about radicals back a few chapters ago, you kind of you learned that, that skill. Uh, and in this chapter, you learn what I is and how to work with it. So that's why it shows up again. Um, for this particular one, we're going to look at question C and I'm going to try to make those radicals so that I can combine them because they can't be combined as they stand. You can't add two radicals that aren't the same. It's like adding X plus Y. You can't add them unless they are alike. So you got to break them down. So I, tell you, I say what's the biggest perfect square that comes out of 18? That would be 9. And the biggest perfect square that comes out of 32 would be 16. And what you see there is when I take a perfect square out of an equation of a, of a number, so 18 has a big perfect square of 9, I put it in front. So when I'm reducing a radical, that's going to be my, my big tip there, is make sure you put that out front. So this is going to give me 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2. All right, So 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2, that can be combined. 3 plus 4 is 7, and now they're like terms. So that ends up being 7 root 2. So this, equa this expression, root 18 plus root 32, comes down to 7 root 2. Okay, and looking at the last few questions, it says solve by taking square roots. So we, what that means is there's nothing more complicated here than taking a square root. If you're looking at it like, oh, I've got to do MAF or anything like that, don't do that. Like here, a lot of th uh, tendency students have to see this and you foil. Don't do, don't foil. That's, that's not that's not what you want to do. You want to just kind of get all the numbers on one side and then square root both sides. So that's the idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna isolate this part right here. Okay, I'm trying to get that x minus 4 squared all by itself. So the first thing I do is get that 18 on the other side. So I'm going to get 7 times x minus 4 squared equals 28. Divide both sides by 7. I get x minus 4 squared equals 4. And at this point, I can square root both sides. And like we did before, when we complete the square, it's going to give me plus or minus 2. So then I get x minus 4 equals plus or minus 2. So I add 4 to both sides. And here's where a lot of times we just leave it like this. But since 2 is a whole number, I can just find my two answers. So if x equals positive 2 plus 4, I get 6. If x equals negative 2 plus 4, I get 2. And there are my two solutions. So don't just leave it at this point. A lot of things are like, oh, can't I just leave it? No, you got to find the two answers. Since this is a whole number... You know, you want to find the two answers. A lot of times when we do square root both sides, you get this to be like a radical or an I or something strange, in which case you would leave it like this. But in this case, it's a whole number. I can find the two answers that way. Okay.